In today's show, we're going to look at using PowerShell with Hyper-V. So I'm going to show you how to get that set up, how to provision uh, VMs with it, some of the management options that are available. And at the end, we're going to take a CSV file full of server names and server settings and then create a bunch of VMs in one fail swoop. Should be pretty cool. But first, here's our intro. <laughs> Hi, my name is Shane Young with Bold Zebras, those guys, and today's show is all about Hyper-V and PowerShell. The real goal of the show is to teach you guys how to have a CSV file full of server names and all the server settings and provision a bunch of VMs in your environment. But to build up to that, we're going to talk about a couple of the PowerShell commandlets first, how to get those on there, just some of those kind of you know things you need to know, and then we'll get into the awesome script. Excited? I'm excited. Let's just hop over to my desktop and get started. So the first thing we're going to talk about here on my desktop is I open up the PowerShell ISC as administrator, right? It has to be an administrator because to do things like install Windows features or even run the how you be PowerShell commandlets, you have to be a local administrator. Um, the other thing to kind of keep in mind here is the reason I chose Hyper-V for this is because you can install Hyper-V on your Windows 10 machine, right? You can... Um, so down in the comments below, I'll put a link to the Getting Started article if you don't have Hyper-V running on your local machine. But it makes it real easy for you to play with and test, unlike that other product where we'd have to kind of go through a bunch of their stuff. So with all that said, the first line of my script here is Add Windows Feature. And so what this feature is, is if you need to add the just the Hyper-V PowerShell commandlets to your local machine, right? So you want to manage a Hyper-V server in the data center but you want to do it from your local machine, you can do this add windows feature and that will get you the command that's installed on your local machine. So that's trick one. I've already done that here, so no problem. Trick number two, update your help. So the PowerShell commandlets for Hyper-V, they don't show up uh, with all the help that you want. Like you want to be able to type in new VM or get help new VM dash examples. It's not going to, it's going to error out the first time because it doesn't have all that pulled in. So make sure you update your help. Third thing we want to do here, let's do CLS, is start our transcript, right? Remember, that's just going to create that log file with all the information uh, from your session here. So that way, if you learn something new, figure out new things, you'll have that for later on. Early days of my PowerShell career, I lost a lot of information because I didn't use start transcript. Okay, there you go, table set. So to create a Hyper-V VM here on my machine, we're going to use the commandlet new VM, right? With the new VM commandlet, we're going to give it a name. We're going to name the VM PowerShell, right? And then we're going to say memory startup bytes. So how much um, memory do you want to provide to this VM? And so instead of providing it in bytes, I did the 1024 MB, which is one gig, right? Path, what folder do I want to put this in? As you can see, E demos VMs, nothing in there right now. Cool. Then we have new VHD path. I'm going to scroll over a little bit here. And so what this is going to do is it's going to provision us a new VHDX file in the location we specified here and connect it up to our VM. If you already have the VHDX created, you created it through a different PowerShell commandlet or through the GUI, no problem, you can attach to it. But for us, we're going to create it here. Then we're going to do new VHD size and bytes. So how big do we want the hard drive to be? We're going to start with 10 gigs. And we can expand all that. We can change all the settings later. But 10 gigs is enough to get us started for this little VM. And then switch name, right? And this is the virtual network you want to connect to. Mine is named external. If you don't know what yours is named, you can go over to Hyper-V Manager, and then you can go to Hyper-V uh, or Virtual Switch Manager right here. And so you can see all the ones uh, that you have in your environment. So for me, it's external. All right. So let's go back to here. So we're going to take this line. Let's run this line. Run selection. Doop, doop, doop. There you go. Now if we go back over to Hyper-V Manager, we have provisioned a VM named PowerShell. It is off, but we've got a VM. All right, let's make a couple setting changes real quick. So we'll minimize Hyper-V Manager here. And so the first mistake that I always make when I create new VMs, whether I do it with PowerShell or the GUI, is I always forget to give it more processors. So then I try to install Windows with one CPU. It takes hours. I get really frustrated. So I made sure in the script, this next line is set-vm name, name your VM, and then processor count, we're just going to set it to four. All right, so if we run this selection here, that will make it four. And then what we want to do is we want to attach that media, right? I want to install Windows, so I've got the Windows downloaded in this folder, so I'm going to do 
add VM DVD drive, VM name, PowerShell, path to the ISO. So let's run that line. All right, and with all that done, now if we go back over here to Hyper-V, we go to PowerShell, and let's do settings. You're gonna see, look, there's our 10, 24 um, megs of RAM, four virtual processors, the Windows Server CD is mounted. We are cooking with gas, folks. So let's cancel out of there. Go over here. And so then now that we've done all of that, what we could have done, which I don't know why I didn't have in my cheat sheet, so we'll just type it out ourselves, is then we'll do a start-vm-name and then PowerShell like so. We'll run that line. It's thinking about it. And look at that, just like that, our PowerShell VM is up and running. There you go. Just as promised, you can now provision a Hyper-V VM via the command line. Now, if you've done anything with Hyper-V before, you know there's about a thousand other settings. I need to really cover a lot of those. The reason is because I'm going to teach you how to fish, right? How to go figure out those for yourself. So what we're going to do is you could just do a get VM and then PowerShell. So if we run that, it just grabs some different things, right? It grabs the object and it shows us some stuff that's going on. 27 seconds of uptime. Woohoo! Operating normally. That's great. But we like to do cool things. So what I prefer you do is go right here to dollar sign cow equals this. So we're going to run this line. And we'll clear our screen off then. And now if we do dollar sign cow, we get the same information back, but we've got that entire virtual machine object in here. So what I might do now is I could either go dollar sign cow and then can do dot and then work my way through all of these different options to check out things. That's pretty cool. Or what I might do is I might say select star. What's this going to do? Now it's going to show me all of the properties for that object. And so I can go through these and check them out, right? So if I need to figure out what are the different settings that I can control, what are the things I want to do, then they are all here. So, you know, is it a uh, snapshot file location? What is that? What is its CPU usage? And what you're going to find, though, is that GetVM gives us a bunch of... Um, read-only properties, which is fine, because once you find a property that you want to change, right, let's go down here, we'll say clear our screen, we can then do set VM, and then we would do what, uh, dash name, and then our friend PowerShell, and then you can go through, look, and so now you can change the processor count like we did before, the, set the static memory, or you know, you set a memory range, right? What do you do if there's a start delay? All of those fun things. Another one, uh, my buddy Todd, right? He made the last PowerShell video for us on the channel here. He likes to set dollar sign notes. And so what he'll do is he'll go into, uh, he'll choose the notes option here. And then he'll start to say a note, right? He'll say, you know, Shane is my hero. And then he'll do this. And then he'll use the, um, the little tilde, right? The guy that's in the top left-hand corner. Also called the, uh, the tick mark, the accent mark. I don't know, whatever you want to call it. Whatever you call that mark, uh, so take mark in, so that'll give you a new line, and then you can say more info. Now, in reality, while Todd likes to write how awesome I am, um, what he'll typically do is once the VM has an IP address, right, 001, which is not my IP address, he'll put the IP address in here, and then he'll put the server name. So that way he can always access all this information. All right, so we'll close that off. We'll hit enter. And so then now you can either do a uh, get VM and then pull that information back, or what we do the most over here is if you go in here to settings for the VM, down here under management name, you can see all that information that we just typed in is available right here. So that's just a great one of those handy little tools because once you learn that that's in there, you know maybe that's where you put the IP so that, that way when you, uh, you need an RDP in, instead of having to open up Hyper-V Manager, find all this stuff, you just have a little script that says, you know, get VM, select notes, and then the notes you see, oh, look, the server IP is 10.0.0.1 or something like that, right? We use it a lot of clever ways, but the more information, the better, right? Notes are always good because they help future you, and future you appreciates it. So be nice to future you. Leave notes. All right, that's my lecture for future you. Let's minimize this again. Okay, so other things you might do, right? Uh, maybe you want to shut down routines. You need to save the VMs first, you know, that type of stuff. So there's uh, save-vm. Well, what I would probably recommend that you guys do to keep more familiar with this is git command-module-hyper-v, 
right? If we run this line, this is gonna show you, look at this, there's like a hundred of these guys, I think. I don't know, let's see how many there is. All right, we'll go up here, we'll do this, we'll do this. We'll do a count right there. Let's see, boop. Oh, I did not mean to press that button, that's bad. That was real bad, I should not have pressed that button. Let's try this again, this button. There's 238 Hyper-V commandlets available. That's pretty awesome. All right, so I implore you to check all those out because that's not the point of the video, right? The point of the video is gonna be the script we're about to talk about, but I wanna make sure you guys knew how to find all those things. Um, other things that do come up though is remove VM PowerShell force, right? And I think I just deleted the VM already. Nope, it did not. All right, so if we try and remove the VM now, it's like, hey, it's open. Well, that's not good. So what if we do a quick little stop VM name and PowerShell. And it says, hey, do you really want to do this? Yes, I do. So get rid of that guy. Boom, bamo whammo. Let's see, did it work? He is, he stopped. And that was a hard power off, but that's okay. It was at the Windows installing screen. So then now we can go back up here and remove. Now, then you know, I was trying to think about, if we look over in our folder, you can see the disk drive is still here. So I was like, oh, maybe I use remove VM hard disk to remove that. Nope, remove VM hard disk removes or detaches a hard disk from an actual virtual machine. Not what we want, right? There is no more virtual machine. There is no commandlet for deleting it. Why? Because that VHDX file is just kind of floating out in uh, nowhereville. So what I do is I just want to run this line right here. Remove item path e demo VMS star dot star. What's that going to do? This is going to delete all this stuff, right? So let's right here. We'll hit run. And then now, oh, I didn't. I need to recurse through the folders, but I got rid of the hard drive. These are all still out here. So anyway, if you guys are not familiar with how to delete files uh, using PowerShell, there's a whole video on that. Uh, so we will save you the lesson on how to get rid of all those. But that got rid of my VHDX file, right? So I guess I could have, instead of star, I could have done VHDX. Been a little safer. You get the idea. Cool? All right. So now the big payoff. Now that we understand the mechanics, we understand the pieces that are in play here, let's look at how I made it a script. So the first part of my script is I have a CSV file. Very complicated here, right? Name, RAM, hard drive size. And I gave the files a name. And then here, this is the amount of RAM in bytes. And that's actually not the, exactly the right number, but it's pretty close. And then this is the hard drive size, once again, in bytes. Um, I couldn't, I haven't messed with it around enough, but I haven't had to figure, figure out a formula where I could type in, you know, uh, 10 gigs or something like that and make it work with this setup. So I was like, you know what? I know how to add zeros. So I added zeros to the end. Um, leave me a comment below if you figured out how to make it so you could type in 10 gigs here or five gigs of RAM instead of this giant number. Cool? All right. So we got a CSV file. Yay. Very complicated. I think you guys can make this yourself. So I'll show you my script. And we'll clear our screen just to make this easier. So in my script, we got dollar sign VMs equals at boom, boom, boom. All that's doing is say provision the VMs uh, variable as a hash table for me. And then we're going to import a CSV. And if this is new to you and you want to understand more about this, there's a separate video below on um, importing, working with hash tables and all that in PowerShell, but not today's lesson. Okay, so that now that we've done that, now that we've got all the information in this VMs variable, we're going to say, for each VM and VMSs, right? Remember with for each, and there's a separate video on that too. There's a lot of videos here. Um, but that's just each, for every object inside that variable, we're gonna do this loop. So in our case, there's three objects in there, so we're gonna do the loop three times. First step is we're gonna say dollar sign name equals VM.name. And the reason for that is I'll show you in just a second, but I needed it in this format. I, I couldn't use this dot notation in the way I wanted to use it, so I had to do this uh, format like this. So this is on purpose, but look, it's our script again. New VM, name, vm.name, right? And I could have changed this. This could be name, but vm.name works here. Memory startup, and that is vm.ram. All right, that's the big 10 000 number before. Path, e demo vms, nothing new there. New VHD path. So what I wanted to do here was I wanted to name my VHDX file the same as the VM's name. And so what I did is I took advantage of the fact that inside of a double quote, 
you can call a variable directly. I can't call dollar sign vm dot name. That won't translate, but dollar sign name absolutely translates. So in that way, I just have this simple little one piece of code here that's going to set all of those uh, very or databases to or not databases, virtual hard drives to have the name we want. And then finally, new VHD size is our hard drive size, and then switch name. I left hard coded external. Easy. Set VM name, VM name, processor count to four. We did that before. And then add VM drive, VM name, VM name, and then the path to our ISO file. That's the whole script, right? Nice and easy. So now if we take this whole thing and we run it, we'll cross our fingers that I didn't mess anything up. All right, it took about 30 seconds. That's not true, probably about 15 seconds. But now that the time's over, look at that. VM1, VM2, VM3. We have created VMs from a CSV file in Hyper-V. And now, you know, once again, you know how to do this now. So if you want to start all those VMs, right, because you want to kick off the install process, no problem, right? You would have just added a line inside the script here for start each VM. Or if you wanted to set other settings a little differently, anything you want to do, now that you've got this core script, you just need to fill in the blanks with the right PowerShell commandlets, which we talked about on the other screen, right? You can figure out what those are by going into git command module Hyper-V and kind of piecing the puzzle together. You're smart, you can figure it out. If you do struggle to figure it out, leave me comments below. If there's scenarios like this you wanna see done uh, differently or you want us to you know, go deeper, happy to. I just thought this was a great introductory topic to get you guys started with using PowerShell to manage your Hyper-V. So hopefully you enjoyed the video. Thanks and have a great day. Me again. Hey, just a reminder, if you want to subscribe, click on my face over here. Or if you want to work together or just need a friend, hit me up over here. Or if really what you wanted was more PowerShell videos, it's probably it. They are over here. All right. Thanks. See ya. Somebody stop the recording.